Well, thank you so much uh, for tuning in to Morning Live. Now, we know that we are well and truly counting down to elections. And now that the political parties have submitted their candidate list for uh, the people that should be their public representatives to serve the organizations in government and parliament, and uh, the public has been reflecting and also sharing their views and their expectations about this. Now, judging by some of the comments, certain demographics seem to be a deciding factor factor for many and some have put the emphasis on youth representation others favor uh, and propagate for women or qualifications and interestingly the quality and caliber of candidates didn't escape scrutiny either. And uh, for a couple of days, uh, we will be looking at political party lists. And uh, first up, the three uh, political parties uh, that polled the highest in the last elections. And with us to discuss the ANC, the DA and EFF lists is political analyst Ralph Matecha. Thanks so much for coming through. Thanks, Akina. Uh, good morning to your viewers. So, uh, talking about how the public have reacted mm -hmm. to these lists that have been submitted to the IEC, I think it's worth pointing out first mm -hmm. and foremost that these lists will still be subjected to scrutiny mm -hmm. um, and rectification by the IEC. So, it's by no means a fait accompli at this mm -hmm. point. But what have you made of this? Well, Sakida, the list can be whittled down on the basis of technicalities at the IEC or even some interference by the leadership of the ANC. But that does not change the fact that the list represent the thinking within the ANC. It is a reflection on how the ANC broader membership think of itself. It is a reflection of uh, how the ANC actually reflect on what has happened within the party in the last few years. And uh, if I were to put it out there, I would say the list, it is the pulse of the ANC. What you see in the list is how the ANC heartbeat is going, unless otherwise someone comes out and claims there has been fraud in relation to this. So we have not had any allegation that people have made it on the list fraudulently. So what you see in the list, you can technically rectify it and get rid of the people that are, are, are on the list, either through the IC and so forth. But the reality is that the thinking of the ANC now now it is the one that says that if it were according to if things were to go according to the members of the ANC they will have those individuals actually that are on the list saving the party but even most importantly Sakina it is the order of how people stand on this list and if you look at this order it is quite telling we have people that are controversial people that have been implicated in state capture and not only are they on the list, Sakina, but they are high up on the list. They are making the top 10 on the list. They are making the top 20, 30 on the list. And it is going to be very difficult to get rid of those people. Actually, it will amount to defying what members of the ANC actually want. The question for me, is the ANC in touch with society? Are the people who have put this list together, were they around in what president of the ANC, Mr. Ramaphosa, referred to as the whole nine nine wasted nine years it's not my view it is the president of the ANC who spoke about a wasted nine years and the list if you look at it it actually takes issue with the president to say that mr. president you live in dream world from where we stand as the members of the ANC we will show you how we think or what we think about this past nine years we don't think it's wasted because if you look at the composition you look at the order it says that it's all good. The ANC want to retain certain people high up to serve and further the mandate of the party. Is that wrong or so forth? For me, it is a judgment that the ANC has put out there and then it is the judgment that the society will have to exercise in relation to the thinking within the ANC. And, and, and just uh, perhaps for the benefit of those who haven't seen it, um, from what Ralph is saying, if we look at, uh, say, the top 10, 15 there, um, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and then David Mabuza, Gwede Mantashe, uh, Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma, at five, uh, Ronald Lamula, which mm -hmm. is an interesting one, mm -hmm. uh, Figile Mbalula, also very interesting because Figile Balula generally tends mm -hmm. to come out very close to the top there. So he's a very popular member mm -hmm. within the African National Congress. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he's followed at seven by Lindiwe Sisulu, um, Zweli Mkize at eight, Peggy uh, Tele is at nine, uh, Nomvula Mokonyane at ten, and then eleven, you have Naledi Pando, Togo Didiza at twelve, uh, Senzo Mtunu at thirteen, Batabile Tlamini fourteen, mm -hmm. and Bladen Zimande at fifteen.
15 and then a um, whole host of others unfortunately we can't run through all of them mm -hmm. but just to give you a sense now just looking at that top 15 mm -hmm. that we mentioned of course there are names there that have courted controversy yeah. uh, during the last term the, the, the number 10 on the list uh, the elephant in the room Nongvula uh, Mukonyani. I mean, uh, her name. She has been implicated in in in, in Busasa. She has been implicated uh, in the testimony that has been given out there. Of course, Sakina. It's a question of. Uh, some people have said uh, no one has been found guilty. This is not a question of legality. It is the question of ethics. I mean, I was going through the papers over the weekend. I see an advert with the president of the ANC standing tall. And in this advert that has been taken by the ANC, there is a mentioning by the party that uh, we as the ANC are taking corruption very seriously. That is why we have uh, instituted the Zondo Commission of Inquiry. But some people will say that having Ms. Mukonyani at number 10, it amounts to ignoring what is coming out uh, at the state capture inquiry for that matter. It's not only South African Sakina who are concerned about this. The international media has been asking questions about this and to say that what do we make of this? Is this the how the party think of itself? And that is the elephant of the room. Of course, you look at top uh, 10 there, you have got some other young prominent people who are there that can be seen as positive. You have got Mr. Ronald Lamola, a rising star within the ANC, and uh, he's making it up there. But of course, the, the rise of uh, Ronald Lamola is also about uh, who he's packed within that top 10. People are looking into this, Sakina. I, I don't think I'm making this up. Mm. But Sabile Lamini coming in there at number 14, and she seems to have her finger on the pulse, at least as far as truisms goes, mm -hmm. because she said this is a reflection of the will of the people, at least within the ANC. Now, where does this leave President Cyril Ramaphosa? Uh, when you look at the likes of Praveen Gordhan, mm -hmm. if we go down on that list uh, in, I think, 70-some-odd uh, position yeah. there, mm -hmm. you look at the likes of uh, Derek Hanukkah, going yeah. towards the hundreds. Now, firstly, where does it leave President Cyril Ramaphosa mm -hmm. and, as you say, this uh, juxtaposition of his position and the message that he is preaching as opposed to what is coming out from the rank and file mm -hmm. and their desires within the African National Congress? And also, what does this say to us about minorities? Sakira, to start with, uh, as far as the president is concerned, the president goes out and uh, takes a very strong position. He has characterized his leadership as based on anti-corruption and this list actually uh, it undermines that it actually says that uh, the president's message on anti-corruption maybe the broader nation outside the ANC don't have a problem with that maybe the broader nation is gravitating towards uh, the message of anti-corruption but the list says that that message is not sinking within the ANC because actually this list seeks to counter that. Remember, uh, there are some people who actually were removed from this list that we are speaking about. The former president of the ANC, Mr. Jacob Zuma, if it were up to the ANC members, they believe that the president still has a lot to offer. It's just that the president said that, no, I don't want to be on the list. There are a few people who actually, including Mr. Mike Mawaya Kulu of KZN, who are on the list have been removed. So if it were up to the ANC, those are people who will still be there. And again, it actually says to President Ramaphosa that your message is actually, you're finding it difficult to sell it among your own comrades. Outside the ANC, there might not be an issue here. But within the ANC, it undermines this. There is no amount of public relations, Akina, uh, through which you can, you can manage this. And actually, if you look at the, the order as well, you go down, Mr. Pravin Gordon, you can say the captain of uh, good governance, if you like, Mr. Derek Hanegom. Those are the faces of... Paragons uh, of good virtue uh, in exactly. the African National Congress. They're at the bottom of the list. And if, I, if you were to ask me, they're on their way out. Uh, it, it looks like they are almost headed there. They, this is not, they are not being reflected. They are not being rewarded, actually, for what they've done within the NC or what they stand for. And the minorities, there is a concern here... Uh, the ANC is struggling. They've been talking about uh, how to deal with minorities, how to deal with the idea of non-racialism. But is it coming out in this list? Is this list diverse, Akira? My, the answer is no. And actually, people are making interesting observations that Absolutely. The, the DA will be more di because, comes out as more diverse than this. And I saw the DA staking that claim. Mm -hmm. And the DA said, we are the most diverse. And I went and I looked at the DA list. Yeah. And I looked at the ANC list yeah. and, and, and the DA list coming up and yeah. they actually 
do have a point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at, so, at least in terms of diversity. Exactly. You may question their thinking on race and so forth, but here they are saying that let us bring those groups and begin a conversation. Whereas if you look at the ANC list, it's almost like a non-starter from the point of view of diversity because it actually says that you are not even willing to bring minorities as representative around the table. You are not willing to demonstrate that you are pushing them up there on the list so that they can be reflected upon as truly representing minority groups. And it's quite sad, given the history of the NC, that this is the party that often says that it's a broad church for all. It is appears, it still a broad church? I mean, really, the list does not really uh, show that. Unfortunately, it falls short of demonstrating that. And the DA can actually claim, perhaps the NC still owns the rhetoric of broad church. They are losing out on the substance of that. So with the DA, of course, people will then point to uh, some of the strife they've been seeing mm -hmm. within the party, mm -hmm. especially uh, the Black Caucus within yes. the DA, and saying, well, is this really anything beyond, again, mm -hmm. the rhetoric, putting mm -hmm. a list together that reflects diversity, mm -hmm. but in reality, mm -hmm. does that actually come to the fore? Exactly. I mean, it's about the quality of the conversation. But Sakina... We often people are critical of quotas, but the best way to indicate if something, if a conversation will be held substantively is also to look at representation. It is the most powerful indication that uh, one cares about groups and the DA can actually make that claim. Of course, they need to go beyond that. They need to be seen handling questions of race very well, but also about the DA, Sakina, some surprises there. Mr. James mm. Selfer did not make it on the list. It's been reported. Yes. Is it the reflection? Are the DA members saying that, Mr. Selfer, thank you very much, but no thanks. Is that the message that is coming out there? In number 22, James Self. It, it, it's been reported that uh, he did not, he was not, uh, he did not make it to the list and he was not even top on the list. I've seen the weekly reports on that and people have been saying, why is it, why is that the case? Why is it not Perhaps they feel it's not there? high up enough. Exactly. Uh, but is it the reflection? Number 22. Is it the reflection of the DA? What does this say about the party as well? And I think we have seen divisions within the DA. We have seen leaders within the DA. We have seen uh, the likes of Mr. Stan Hazen. Uh, being criticized by some within the DA. They are dealing with their own woes. And I think that uh, quite interestingly about this list, even when you look within the ANC, Sakina, and you look within the DA, it's, it's how are the broader membership of the parties reflecting on their leaders? Because this is exactly what the list should be about. How the membership of the party feel the agenda of the political parties need to be pursued. But when it comes to the EFF, I have to say, there seems not to be a problem there. A tightly knit political party, Sakina, there seems not to be any concerns about the list. Well, I've seen Ringo Majingo. If anything, um, you know, 24 out of 25 of the uh, uh, candidates uh, who are already in the National mm -hmm. Assembly there. Uh, so, but beyond that, uh, what else is to be reflected upon here? most pertinently, mm -hmm. according I, to you. I, I've heard people saying uh, the EFF has got a very long list of up to 200 people. Uh, that's the question that's been coming out. Uh, probably, if you have 200 people and some go in parliament, you know, you just push people up. But also the presence of Mr. Ringo Madlingo, so I don't know where he is on the list. I think he's somewhere <laughs> 36. Yes, uh, yes, yes, further I, down. If, yes, um, but uh, the question also is, uh, what does he have to offer? to the agenda of the EFF as well. I don't know. Well, some might argue, you know, uh, politics is a populist game, so uh, maybe he can bring some of his uh, followers. Does he have constituency? That would be oh, very interesting uh, now, to what, see. What, what, how would you define a constituency in this instance? I mean, a constituency, it has to be someone who bring a group of people in a manner that it actually further the agenda of the party. And I don't want to Does go it necessarily have to further the agenda of the party or do you need the numbers to get the votes? Can you just you look at the numbers? Can you just get the numbers randomly? I mean, Isn't what is that what parties do? It should not be about or, that. But, but that's what they do. It should be about the numbers, Sakina, but it should also be about the agenda of the party. What agenda? I mean, How many 
many members of political parties today the strategic can position. articulate the strategic position or the ideology of the parties? It cannot just be the game of the numbers because people will begin to be concerned. People will say within the EFF, for example, people will ask, uh, I mean, what's Ringo got to do? We have worked within the party. Why are we not on the list? Remember, this list... Maybe we can ask that question the list going are, forward. This list, you know, they are usually contested. People are... Uh, they, they create divisions. You are going to see people defecting to other parties because Absolutely. they did not because make they it did on this not list. make it high enough onto the list. Is the fairness of what it takes to be on this list within these parties? Are this list being imposed by the leaders? Are this list supposed to be reflection by members? From the point of view of principles, Sakina, they are supposed to be reflection by members of the party, not necessarily an imposition. And so I really wonder all parties. Exactly. I really wonder how the reflection within the EFF have resulted in Mr. Madlingos making it. But quite an interesting addition. It is, really. it is, it is an interesting one. It's an interesting list. Mm -hmm. All the lists, I must say, are quite interesting mm -hmm. for various reasons. But of course, we've seen new parties, uh, what some would have referred to in the past, and I know the parties mm -hmm. themselves will take issue with that, as splinter parties, you know, come mm -hmm. onto the scene, do well perhaps mm -hmm. in their first election, and then just start to uh, make a natural progression towards death somewhere along the line. But the EFF uh, seemingly set to buck that trend. You know, there is something, you know, you can hate the EFF and say whatever you say. They stand a chance in this election to be the first party in post-apartheid to retain position number three, election on election. We have seen uh, uh, parties coming, taking position number three. We have seen COPE doing that. It has been IFP in the past. The EFF is going to be the first in this election if they retain position number three, which is, I think for me, is a fait accompli. They are going to be the first party to actually cement the position number three. For me, it actually says a lot about the position of the DA because I don't think the EFF is going to settle for position number three. If the DA continue to struggle with the legitimacy as an opposition party, the EFF is coming. It's likely to depose the DA maybe two or three elections down the line because now they have tasted a stable position on number three. I don't think they will settle there. And you know the EFF, they are so good in exaggerating their performance. If they retain that, <laughs> they are going to stretch it. The DA is going to feel the hit. And... Perhaps that's what younger people ought to do, whether you agree or disagree with them. And then, of course, just coming back uh, in closing to President Cyril Ramaphosa mm -hmm. and the ANC, should he be worried? He should be worried. He, he's constantly coming across as being isolated within his own party. And uh, he needs his own party to be able to implement the agenda of the party or even his agenda as the leader of the party. He will not survive if the ANC or the broader membership of the ANC does not buy his story. Uh, South Africans may buy his story, but he needs the ANC, he needs stability within the ANC to be able to implement his agenda. No matter how great he is in the eyes of South Africans, as long as the ANC is not happy with him, he could just easily be removed. I'm not aware of a party that can just go ahead with the leader that they don't like and they don't share uh, his or her principles for that matter. So he should be worried as to how long does it take actually to shift and realign the ANC from his idea of the nine wasted years to maybe uh, in a different direction. It seems as if the work is really, I mean, he's encountering serious problems. His allies are just going further, further down. Just a final the, on one, and very briefly, because we're out of time. Mm -hmm. The vision of Cyril Ramaphosa and the vision of the ANC, the, are they the same thing? From this list, from the conversations from some of the issues that are raised by senior members of the ANC, I don't think the, they are the same thing. And I, uh, that's how it is. Well, Ralph Matecha, thanks so much, uh, uh, Ralph Matecha, sharing his views with us on uh, the uh, party list submitted to uh, the Electoral Commission by the ANC, uh, the DA, and of course the EFF. And we'll be looking through many of those lists as we approach, uh, approach elections. But thanks to Ralph Matecha, political analyst. It's time now for your news at 8 with Leanne.